and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on hypertension in pregnancy. It is also called pregnancy induced hypertension and it is defined as the blood pressure more than 140 for systolic and more than 90 for diastolic millimeter mercury. Recorded on at least two separate occasions and at least four hours apart, arising after the 20th week of gestation in a previously normal tensive woman and the blood high blood pressure resolved completely after the 6th postpartum week. There are also some other classes such as preeclampsia, where there is pregnancy induced hypertension together with significant proteinuria. And significant proteinuria means that the urine dipstick for protein is at least 2 plus, or the 24 hour urine albumin is 300 mg or more. Eclampsia is a severe, more severe condition where there is hypertension with seizure. And other classification include chronic hypertension, where the hypertension is diagnosed before the pregnancy or prior to 20th week of gestation or persisted after 6 weeks of postpartum. The last class would be unclassified hypertension, where the hypertension arises after the 20th week of pregnancy. However, there is no previous blood pressure recorded before the 20th week, so we cannot confirm whether it is a chronic hypertension or it is a pregnancy-induced hypertension. However, in cases such like this, we usually manage it as pregnancy-induced hypertension. The severity of hypertension in pregnancy can be divided into mild, moderate, and severe. For mild, the BP range is 140 to 149 for systolic and 90 to 99 for diastolic. Whereas for moderate, systolic is 150 to 159 and diastolic is 100 to 109. Severe hypertension is when the systolic BP is more than 160, diastolic BP more than 110. If the systolic BP is more than 180, we consider it as hypertensive emergency. These are some of the risk factors of hypertension in pregnancy. For example, mothers who are having first pregnancy or there are multiparous with history of preeclampsia in any previous pregnancy or it has been 10 years or more since the last baby. Mothers who are more than 40 years old and have BMI more than 35 are at a higher risk of hypertension as well. And others include family history of preeclampsia, multiple pregnancy, if they are having twins or triplets this pregnancy, or if they have underlying medical conditions such as pre-existing hypertension, renal disease, diabetes mellitus, and even systemic lupus erythematosus can predispose them to hypertension during this pregnancy as well. For investigations, for blood investigation, we can do full blood count to rule out anemia and thrombocytopenia, which indicates endothelial dysfunction, and there is also platelet consumption seen in severe preeclampsia and HELP syndrome. Liver function tests to look for elevated liver enzymes like aspartate transaminase and alanine transferase, aminotransferase, which can be seen in HELP syndrome. Renal function tests to assess the kidney function, uric acid level, to rule out placental insufficiency and also to predict the perinatal outcome, coagulation profile to rule out disseminated intravascular coagulation, and group 7 hole. For urine investigations, urine dipstick can be done to look for protein, epithelial casts, or red cells. If there is protein present, we can do a 24-hour urine protein to quantify the amount of protein. This can suggest the amount of protein loss and also the severity of the disease. There are also some investigations for fetal surveillance, which include ultrasound to assess the fetal growth and amniotic fluid volume, CTG, which is a cardiotocograph, to assess the fetal status, and also umbilical artery doppler to rule out intrauterine growth restriction, which could be one of the complications of hypertension in pregnancy. For management, you can admit the patient and first assess the patient see if she has any symptoms of impending eclampsia, such as headache, blurring of vision, and epigastric pain. For physical examination, check the blood pressure, the pulse rate, and also remember to check for reflexes. At the same time, check the urine albumin levels. Stabilize the maternal condition, insert IV line, and withdraw blood for the investigations mentioned just now. And next, we have to control the blood pressure by starting parenteral antihypertensive, such as IV labetalol or hydralazine. 
To prevent seizures, we can give magnesium sulfate, where 1 ampoule of magnesium sulfate is equivalent to 2.47 gram or 5 ml. And this is the table showing the loading dose and maintenance dose for intravenous or intramuscular route. For intravenous route, the loading dose is 4 gram or 8 ml of magnesium sulfate plus 12 ml of normal saline, slow bolus over 15 minutes. Whereas the maintenance dose is 24.7 gram plus 500 ml of normal saline to run at 21 ml per hour. For intramuscular route, Intramuscular route can be considered if there is no IV access. So for loading dose of intramuscular route, you can give 5 gram or 10 ml given at each buttock. For maintenance dose, 5 gram in alternate buttock every 4 hourly. After giving magnesium sulfate, we have to do monitoring by checking whether the patellar reflex is present, check the respiratory rate every 15 minutes, check the urine output, and also monitor the serum magnesium sulfate level to make sure it's within the therapeutic range, which is 1.7 to 3.5. We have to watch out for signs and symptoms of magnesium sulfate toxicity. And the signs include absent patellar reflex, respiratory depression, or respiratory arrest. If there is magnesium sulfate toxicity, the antidote to be given is 10% of calcium gluconate, 10 ml over 10 minutes, 10-10-10. So, other management include fluid management, where there is, we have to give strict input-output charting, and also monitoring of the mother and the fetus through PET chart, vital signs monitoring, magnesium sulfate chart, the input-output chart, and also continuous CTG or Doppler for the fetus. And other management include deciding the mode and timing of the delivery. So, for mode of delivery, it will depend on the urgency of the delivery, whether there is any previous caesarean section scar, how is the favorability of the cervix, and also depending on the condition of mother and fetus. The most preferred mode of delivery would be vagina delivery. Whereas the timing of delivery depends on the mother's condition. If she has severe pregnancy-induced hypertension, do it at 37 weeks. If PIH on antihypertensive, 38 weeks. If not on antihypertensive, we can allow up to 40 weeks. And if there is preeclampsia, that end up with complication, we have to deliver as soon as possible. If the baby is preterm baby, which means less than 34 weeks of gestation, we'll have to give IM dexamethasone two doses before delivering. And the indication to deliver as soon as possible is when we are unable to control the blood pressure, or if there is eclampsia where there is fitting episode, fetal distress or intrauterine growth restriction, or the maternal condition is rapidly worsening. These are the conditions to consider immediate delivery. So if the mother is now stable, it can discharge with no fetal compromise and normal PE profile. Monitoring as outpatient with antihypertensive, BP check biweekly, serial growth scan and umbilical artery doppler two weekly, and manage until 37 weeks and deliver. This one is for pregnancy induced hypertension. So, there are some complications of preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is pregnancy-induced hypertension with proteinuria. So, there are maternal and fetal complications. Where maternal complications, there is a risk of cerebral vascular accident like shock, risk of renal failure, liver failure, disseminated intravascular coagulation, pulmonary edema or hemorrhage. It can also increase the risk of placental eruption and eclampsia. Whereas the fetal complications include premature birth, intrauterine growth restriction, respiratory distress syndrome, acute fetal distress, and even intrauterine death. So you can see how serious preeclampsia is, and it requires adequate management. So one of the complications for the mother is eclampsia, where there is uh, blood pressure that is too high and causing fitting episode where she has seizure. So the management of eclampsia is described in this slide. First, we have to call for help and check the airway breathing and circulation. Put the mother in a left lateral position and secure two IV line to give the medication. So we can give IV or IM magnesium sulfate loading dose followed by the maintenance dose. Start antihypertensive to control the blood pressure. Do the necessary investigations I mentioned just now. And then after the mother is stabilized, monitor in HCU 
with patch chart, respiratory rate, urine output, and other vital signs, and plan for delivery for eclampsia cases. That's all for this video. Thank you.